Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, Curator for Bausch, New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today is a very special day. It's the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. World War II ended on the deck of an Iowa-class battleship, USS Missouri, which is now docked in Pearl Harbor on Battleship Row. We're standing on board the Battleship New Jersey today in an area that's almost identical to where the surrender took place on Missouri. The ceremony began with General Douglas MacArthur representing all the Allied powers exiting from the Admiral's suite here. He walked to this ladder, which you can see is made out of brass, unlike all of the other steel ladders, because this was the Admiral's ladder. During World War II, this was a 40 millimeter gun tub. The general had to walk around it, and the Mark 51 director that controlled it, which was right here. This hatch had been closed, and the assembled Allied officers, including Admiral Halsey and his Third Fleet staff, uh, and other representatives of the Allied powers, were lined up there. They had prepared themselves in the captain's in port cabin, which is through this door. The general walked to about here, which is where a wardroom table had been set up. The mushroom vent there had been removed and temporarily plated over, with again the Allied officers standing directly behind it. Turrets one and two were rotated slightly to create more room here on the deck. Some wooden chairs from a British destroyer were brought on board. Wooden furniture um, had been taken off of American ships earlier in the war because of its tendency to burn, and the metal tanker chairs used in their place were not formal enough. A green felt tablecloth was on the table, and a number of copies of the instrument of surrender, as well as a number of fountain pens were in place. Japanese delegates stood here on the opposite side of the table, flanked by other Allied officers. Uh, they were civilian representatives of the government of Japan, dressed in top hats and morning coats. From here, they could look up on a ship that was covered with sailors and press members and representatives of the Allied powers. They sat on top of the turrets. They stuck their heads out of the open bridge windows. And they sat around gun tubs and navigating platforms all the way up the superstructure. From here, they could also see, hung on the superstructure, the flag which Commodore Matthew Perry had flown from his flagship in 1853 when he sailed into Tokyo Harbor and forcibly opened Japan to Western trade. For the symbolic nature, it had been flown out specially for the occasion. American fleets had visited Tokyo Harbor on two separate occasions since then. Uh, once, 1901, when the Great White Fleet sailed through to peacefully demonstrate American power and the ability to project American force across the Pacific. And then on that day in 1945, when the US fleet had returned, again projecting American power across the Pacific. For further symbolism, standing directly behind General MacArthur were the British General Percival and the American General Wainwright, two generals who had surrendered their entire armies at the beginning of the war to the Japanese. Each man had been uh, recently freed from internment in POW camps, and both men were horribly emaciated. MacArthur had a battery of fountain pens sitting in front of him, and each of the various copies of the documents uh, which were going to go to separate powers, he signed with a separate pen. The first two pens he handed over his shoulder to Wainwright, who had replaced him in the Philippines, and Percival, who had surrendered the English possessions in Western Pacific. The ceremony was extremely brief. It lasted barely over a half hour. MacArthur's own speech was uh, a mere 90-second formality. Thank you for joining us today for the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. Be 
be sure to tune in today at 3 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for similar live programming hosted by the Battleship Missouri, where the actual surrender took place.